plant bending. We're going to be plant bending today. So we're plant bending and learning how to bend your plants, learning how to get your plants more into that tune and uh, how plants bend. So why do you why do you bend the plant? Well, the whole thing is I want to create a mother plant. I want to be able to create, so if you're going to look at, say, this particular arm here, and you can see on the side, you can see how all of these become clones, right? But when they're doing this way, they're not. They're growing up deformity, and they're hard to peel. So I'm going to show you a peeling method too, right? But with this, you're going to see, and when I get into this, what I'm going to do right now is, is what I really should talk about in the very, very beginning is what we're going to need to do this with. Okay, so first I'm going to move my cup out of the way. So that's got our seeds. Now, like I said, you're going to put this in a, in a dark place. The seeds next week. So I'm going to put this in a dark place right now so you know no one can see it. The seeds have been sequestered in a soundproof dark booth. So and I've we'll now put that later. in a dark, cool place. And I'll come back tomorrow morning when I get up in the morning and do you that. You have a little so. celebration when you tap those seeds and see them fall to the bottom. Celebration time. And don't forget, I have, I'm still on my morning coffee. It's a, uh, it's a cute little cup you got there. Well, uh, hand blown so glass. Well. Support your local glass blowers. Just saying. There you go. So, help me. I'm not quite grasping why we're bending this plant. Well, this is what we're going to get into. So, the whole thing is, is when you're creating a mother plant, a lot of people, you're going to get a single stalk plant. When I talk about like a single stalk plant now, now check this out. This is a single stalk plant, in a sense. Can you see this plant? Uh, yeah, you can't miss that plant, John. Can you see how long this plant is? Holy lightning. Okay, That's so enormous. see now how is this this thing is gonna be like 15 feet tall, right? So what I'm showing you guys, see how this is in a two-gallon pot too? And people say, oh how do you grow plants that big? This is this is healthy, isn't it? As you can see, it was sitting in a corner too, so you can see how it's grown. So as this being a mother, this has created a small problem for me because it's so big. See how it's it's got like nothing in the middle here? Right, super right? tall. Super tall, super tall. So when you're creating mothers, that's why I wanted to show you, you know, how this plant is. Let me look at, this plant is just like, woo -wee. So oh. you'd, rather, you'd rather have that more bushy and shorter. I would rather have this a nice bush round ball. Like a beautiful ball, a beautiful plant that is more geared towards being able to cut several clones and not just a few off the top. And what we mean by that is, okay, so how about this? I actually cut the top off of one. Okay. That's the very top. This is the very top of a plant that I'll show you later. So I have a few things here to show you guys on what we're doing. So this is just the top of a plant. People say, if you cut the top of the plant off, will it kill it? No. If you cut your head off, you're going to die. But a plant, you're not going to die. So this is Thanks just going to be a way. Now, as I look at this, if I'm going to cut clones from this, see? Now you can see like I can get like one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten clones off of that, all right? Now I'm going to show you something a little bit different because if I manipulate and bend this plant, you're going to see all of these inner nodes here, these are all going to turn up and these will all become individual clones. So instead of getting tw 12 off the whole thing, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven off of just one branch, as you can see, right? You can see what I'm talking so about? So they're all reaching for the light. Exactly. So if I bend this over, these are going to stand up. So when you go to a lake of the forest and you see a tree falls in the forest and it's been there for 10 years, and all of a sudden all those branches turn into more trees, and all of a sudden you see like four or five trees coming up from that, from that one branch. Those branches, so when I bend this over, these clones here are going to be thick as this branch here, and these will then turn into their own trees instead of it just being one tree. Okay. See? See what so, I'm trying so, to explain? So you, you drilled holes or punched holes in that pot? So on the top of this pot, I've drilled holes all the way around. And I've and done that. Just to hold the string? It's going to be to hold the string. But here's another lesson. This is a great lesson. String is another lesson, too. This is going to be important. We're not um, going to use string, are we? You know this twine you get everywhere? Yeah. This is great, right? Pretty good. 
Um, you know, talk about this. Just Arne should do this. Um, this twine, I'm wrapping it around my foot just because I can. I'm trying to do something here. It's like this. I don't have the strength right now. It's not gonna work. See what happened? Oh, it breaks instantly, right? What also is about this twine, the funny thing is I went to my local hydroponic store. I said I want to tie up my plants and stuff like that. And they sold me this. This is wrong. This is going to hold moisture. This is going to hold, hold disease. This is going to be able to, you know, you hear what I'm talking about? This is not the proper twine to use for tying up your plants. Get rid of that. I can't believe the hydroponic store actually sold me that twine for tying up my plants. And I told them that was what I was doing. And you know what? He gave it to me for free. You know why? Because I'm going to come back with problems and spend more money. What are you going to use to tie down the plant? You know that dollar store twine that you get that's made out of plastic? I actually had it there, but... This is like a poly... Like a poly... Like I can't say it right now. Can you say it for poly, me? It's poly. It's Thank polyethylene. You. Thank Paul. That's the word I was looking for. Polyethylene. Polyethylene. So polyethylene is not going to hold moisture. It's going to dry out and it ain't going to create disease. And you know what? It's going to cost you like $3 yeah. instead of getting it for free. But you know the amount of money you're going to spend on trying to deal with the problems you just got from all of that twine that you've had wrapped around your plants in a high humidity grow room for the last four months? Because in the beginning, you start tying all these down and you were vegging, the 80% humidity in that room. You hear what I'm saying? So maybe not at the end to say, oh, what are you talking about? We're talking a long period of people who are just learning how to grow and they're using the wrong rope. So it's important. Rope is important too, right? So I just wanted to like, touch bases on that quickly with everybody and let them know how that works. So we call like plant whispering. This is called plant bending. Plant bending with John Burfellow. What a whisper. You know, I Hope feel like grow part I feel two. This is good. Well, show us, show us what you're doing, John. I think I might have to do a long rip first. I'll do that second. Back okay. with John's bong head in just a moment. Yeah, we'll be back with a bong head. But you know what? I, I do have I do have my prop here. So my buddy Carrie dropped me off some of this weed. This is awesome. Check this out. So it comes in a little humidor by Sage. This is yep. like you know, if you're a fisherman, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. You open this thing up. It's got some nice weed in it, but if you look down the middle, there's a Bovita pack in the middle. Stop. Boom. It made there me it laugh. Is. Now this is even better. This weed, he was here six months ago. And if everybody would remember one of my old videos, he actually left this here by accident. Six months later. In a little container with Bovita. Had you're, enjoying it. It. you're enjoying it today. Oh man. It's like a properly cured. You know how you have that perfect cigar and you talk about that flavor? Cannabis. <coughs> Wait one second, that was a good toke. <coughs> Cannabis needs time to actually cure, to get those proper aromatherapies. And we talk about, because um, cannabis is a therapy. When I say aromatherapy, because those terpenes are therapeutic, right? We understand how those terpenes work. We've talked about that. So, and it really comes down to is. Who holds all that key? The grower. The guy cutting the clones, making the moms, and getting that to that final stages. So I'm going to put on my glasses here. And I just left this thing completely like out to lunch here. So I'm pretty much looking at some of these here right now. And what I'm going to do here is, because we can do this at the same time, I've actually started this over here too. So as I'm doing the mother, I'm going to move this over here for two seconds. And show you what was going on right here now. You see the cloning tray, right? Yeah. So when we're doing clones, and because I'm going to be cutting a clone right off of this plant, I can already see this is a perfect clone, this is a good clone, that's a good clone, this is a good clone. Before I start tying these over, I'm going to be able to take some clones off of this particular plant. That's why I chose this one to kind of work with you guys over the next probably 45 minutes. 
So we've already pH'd our water. So I have a Blue Lab pH pen. So this is a new one here. So I left this one in the box. You can pre-calibrate this. Read the instructions, really important. I use distilled water. Repeat that though, you're pH in your water. Your pH in your water at 6.3 to 6.5. I've been as high as 6, 7 because I'm learning new different methods, but you're going to find that proper pH, but you do not want a low be below 6, 3. So, so the, the pH higher one. the pH number, the higher the alkalinity. Exactly. Okay, so you want a high alkalinity at Well, you want around six. between a 6, 3 to 6, 5 is always the kind of go-to okay. for a lot of people. That's what we've always been accustomed to go by, unless there's some amazing research at 6.25 or, you know what I mean. But uh, So 6, 6.3 to 6.5. Seems to work. Now, I use distilled water, like I said. Now, another method I do is I actually boil my water first, guys. So that's hot. And I do this for a reason. I boil my water. So when I create instant humidity inside of my dome, and why I do that is because I want to have moisture in here. I want to have this at 80% humidity. Like for these clones, they want to be, they want their vape sat. So vape sat is the amount of vape of, of let me just explain this. Your leaf is 100% saturated with moisture. The outside air is your vape air, and you want that to be a high humidity so your plants are expiring so much, and these plants are able to concentrate on rooting. I guess that's the best way of me saying it. So, so you're giving the plant a cue to concentrate on rooting by having a high moisture content in the actual air around the clones. So I'm going to pour boiling hot water in here. And you're going to watch this steam up right away. And what's really cool is how these pucks, they, they puff up instantly. So within seconds, I'm just going to kind of tilt this up. You can almost pretty much see that those things are, you can see them expanding instantly. You can see them yep. growing in there. And that's why I use hot water, guys. Because hot water helps it expand quickly. At the same time, it gets it all nice and hot and humid in there. So you do not put these clones directly into hot water. Of course, you do not do that. So this is just some of the stages of me getting going with this so you guys can show you. So I, now I have my distilled water in this pot because why? I'll be able to cut. I'm not cutting. This is going to be kind of cool little method I'm going to show you guys here. So right away, I'm looking at this one here. And this is not going to root. That's kind of like garbage, right? This is just, this is why there wasn't enough light going on down here, as you can see. So you're seeing some deficiencies in the bottom. You're seeing leaves dying off down here because there's no light. Because this plant's growing tall, the light's coming down on the top and leaves are coming over top, right? So that's how I'm going to create this mother plant and change the way it's going to grow. Now this in specifically, I can just peel off of the stalk because of how it is. And when I peel this off, I'm going to cut that. Now this actually can become a clone. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put this into my water. Just like that. So I kind of keep it just so you see how it just sits there nicely. And so there's no air getting at the bottom of it. Exactly. Inside of that, I can't say it properly, but I think you know what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to quickly go around this and take a look at what I can take from a few clones. Like I say, I peel. So as you can see, I'm peeling this off the stalk. Now these are not the best clones at all. I'm just showing you what you can do. I'm probably not going to root this. I might do it as an experiment just to show you, see what's going on, show you different cloning methods. But this is videos that I've done on several occasions. I've done this over the years because I have over 350 videos now on YouTube. So there's other videos you can look at and take a look at cloning methods and stuff like that 100%. But this one in particular is about creating a mother plant. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly go around this plant. So you got all these little clones. We can have those ready, but like I said, they're not going to be the best ones. But see, this one here would be. This one I can peel off because I'm not going to use this. See, it comes off the stalk. I cut that off, and that might be a better clone, as you can see. But all of this here isn't. Depending so on is, how there, is there a limit to how many you can take off this plant? Um, you can strip it down so there's nothing left and just have one plant like this to revenge it. So first we're going to do our first tie down. And what I'm looking at here right now is I can see... I've already got some rope kind of down here like this. This one's a little bit tall. This is going to be for a bigger branch. So I'm going to have this one off to the side. But what I really want to do is I'm going to probably start from tying this first little branch right here. 
and I'm going to tie this like right over like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the string and I go over it to like this and I bring it down so I kind of know where it's going to go on the pot and then I actually link it right behind this node right here as you can see. So I want to bring that down to about right there. So now I'm going to take this row do that. Now I used to cut the guy was telling me he used to cut pre-cut a bunch, but then he realized that pre-cutting wasn't really working out for him because every plant and everyone's going to be different. And you get too many long tails, it gets confusing. I so you didn't my actually tie it up on the branch, you just looped it around the branch? You're looping it on the branch, you do not tie it on the branch, exactly. Okay. And this one particular hole isn't drilled out properly. And I didn't bring the drill, I was going to bring the drill in here. Got it. Stump truck day, so we're outside. Okay, so you're looping it around, and you're gonna see this whole thing transform. And as I pull that down, you don't wanna pull it too far. See, that's too far, because you're putting too much stress right here on the plant. So you wanna bend that up to about there. Now what I'm talking about is this is all gonna turn up now. All of this is gonna turn up, and we're gonna slowly work on this. Now I can bring this over, and I just do a loop. So you're not stressing it too much, but you're tying it just enough. That it's staying bent like that. See that? Yep. So we're plant bending. Plant now I always say bending. do three times. If you do it once, it will come undone. If you do it twice, it probably will. But three times, a charm. So that's your first kind of what we're doing here. Now you can see now what about this one here, we're going to get into that one, but I'm going to slowly turn the plant and get into this next one. Now I really don't need to have this one here because that's going to kind of grow out. We're going to see how this is going to manipulate more if I want to, but I can do that with this one. But here's a great big branch. Now you can see how this is kind of a little bendy right now. I'm going to want to stabilize this plant now. So as I'm kind of going through this, I'm like, okay, this plant maybe need a little bit more stabilizing. You guessed it. We got steaks. Now, I do not like bamboo steaks. They suck. Let me really, really say this again. Bamboo steaks suck. Why? They, they hold disease. They hold bugs. They hold, and this is my opinion, but I've asked this with hundreds of growers. You still using uh, bamboo steaks? Hell no. Why? Spider bites. Thrips. All kinds of problems. So um, if you're an outdoors, you know, bamboo steaks are great, but really if you're gonna be gardening and you plan on doing this, go get yourself, spend the extra dollar, because they're not cheap. I mean they're not not expensive. Instead of spending 20 cents, spend a dollar. Very, 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 very important that you do certain things. And at the same time goes in investing into tomato clips. These things are awesome. If you're a gardener, tomato clips are probably gonna be your best friend, honestly. So when I'm going to do this, I kind of go right down the center. I'm going to kind of find a way, and you're going to be able to find this way. As you can see, I'm going right in the middle here, right? So I'm going to kind of push that into there. Now I'm going to grab my tomato clip, and I'm going to find a good spot to anchor this plant. So you're just stabilizing the center of the plant? Yes. So that as you pull more of these uh, arms down? It's not going to pull right over. You don't want to pull this plant over, right? The whole thing is, is now that I'm kind of working with this and I'm slowly going to start bending this plant, you do not want to break it, you don't want to pull it over. And remember, now that this is being pulled and pulled over, and you're going to see the difference here, these become very, very fragile. And what we realize is this is an old moon, so Buddy's like, whoa, this is really fragile. So just by pulling on this branch here, this is going to snap right here in the middle. As you can see, there's a little point right here in the plant. So we came up with this new trick yesterday. Check this out. It's pretty awesome. So needless to say, you've snapped a few of these things off in your time of uh, learning how to do this properly. Right there! Snapped right off! Boom! See this whole branch? This whole branch, you guys, this whole branch got peeled right off. And I did not want to do that, because look at all these clones now. See, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 clones off of that one branch. It's like, oh. 
So is that ruined now? Well, no, because I put it into water right away, and I'm going to show you, and I will be cutting clones off of this later on. As, as it's going to be a little long episode, I'm just showing you how to cut clones. What's happened? We broke this branch off. That branch was broken off right here. See that? Boom, yeah. And you just did that today? It happened. Even a veteran grower like you. All the time. What do you mean? You're walking by a plant. Things happen. This is how you learn, right? This isn't dead. I learned this years ago. Boom, break it up, put it in water. This happened yesterday. No, two days ago. Two days ago. Two days ago, it's me sitting in water. So it's like when you cut roses, you put them in water, you put them in the fridge, right? How long do those roses last for? Sometimes weeks, right? Oh, now check this out here. You can see that how these have just all popped up and the humidity in this dome is perfect. And that's what we call getting ready to cut clones right there. So that's what happened with the bend. I was able to save that branch, which is here. But what, I, what we did learn was this thing. So we got the Did you already put the tomato clip on the uh, post? Yes. So now I'm going to do here. Check this out. We learned yesterday because we broke that plant. We're like, how can we stop that from happening? Oh, we are just great people, aren't we? So I'm going to see here to here, and I'm going to put a... From there to there. So I'm going to put a tomato clip right in the middle here. You see that? Yeah. Right on the plant there. Here's the branch here. Now I'm going to take another tomato clip, and I'm going to go up to this branch where I think it's going to bend nicely about right there before it starts doing any damage. If I go lower, I can feel it's gonna snap. So I've gone up two, four, maybe six inches, and I've gone in between the two, I hope you guys can see this here. I've gone, I'm going in between here so it doesn't fall down from here to here. I put a tomato clip there and a tomato clip here. So how far do you have to move that big? It's gonna inch? be depending on your plant, right? So like I said, this is, so what I have here is I have a tomato clip inside of here and a tomato clip right here now. See that? Two and two inside. Now I'm gonna get myself a piece of string. And I'm now going to tie this inside this first tomato clip around it. So it's gonna use it as an anchor is what we're doing right now. And this is how we did yesterday. It was two chefs in the kitchen. Why not breaking a plant? Because now that I'm doing this, I've now changed the point of where it can bend. See, now I can bend it here and it won't break down here. Brilliant. I know. This is just us just playing around. So um, now I asked Dennis, my friend, so how did you learn this? Because I taught this myself. I'm like, even better. So this is just how we learn. So now I'm creating this nice little loop on the inside of this plant. You can see this inside happen here now? Yep. Okay. So now I'm just going to tie this off. So now, always three times, remember? One, two, three times the charm. Why? Because two times it'll let loose, once it won't hold. Now check this out. See what I just did? And that's, you're, you're almost going to horizontal. You're going to be just a little above horizontal? Yeah, now that one there, I'm going to say I want to go a tiny bit lower, actually. Because it can probably go down to about that node there. So you're going to find out what's going to be your sweet spot for your bend. Right? There we go. Now I can turn that into a clone. This will turn up. That will turn up. That, that's a lot better. So see, see, see what just happened with this plant? Because I put that anchor in here. I'm able to now bend this. Now we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve clones coming off that branch, just like that other branch. See what I'm talking about? So that's a dozen plants coming off of one branch. Exactly. Now think how many branches we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, four, fifteen branches. How many clones can I get off this plant? In about a week or two? A couple hundred? Phenomenal. But now we're so, going to bend this plant. Uh, I'm how sure. long does it take for, when you bend these branches, how long will it take the plant to react? Okay, so start? within 12 hours, you're going to see, and I'll show you here at the end, I'll be able to unplug my laptop and show you what I'm doing, because what I'm doing now is I have eight plants under the three different spectrums of lights, and each plant gets their own light. 
So I have it going, and I'm going to show. This is my test right now. So over the next three months, I'm really starting to understand how to grow with LEDs. And I want to take a look at different spectrums and how they're manipulating the plant for veg, for full flower, and then for another spectrum, which veg and flower spectrum in between. So we're able to start manipulating plant spectrum and create light recipe, plant recipe, light recipes for individual species is the new game on the block, actually. So once again, I've tied this one over. I've cut my leg. I'm just looping it around, and I'm finding that pressure point where it's going to kind of probably tie back the best. And we're going to be able to pull that right down. So it's kind of more like that angle again. So it's can, and Now, you don't want to stress it too much because you don't want to snap it. And I, believe me, we've broken a few now. So that's why there's so many holes. See how I'm looking where I can tie it? That's why I've drilled a hole like pretty much every inch because, see, there's going to be so many different places and so many different branches because now I can bring this one down in the middle. See yeah. how this is slowly working up? So I'm like looking at the plant and it's coming from here, but I want to be able to pull this top branch in between. So this is why it takes a while to create a mother plant. This is not something that happens in 15 minutes. Once we get a little part of this, I'll probably bend the top and show you some more and then really get into finalizing this plant. But so to total time estimate for this plant to become bent the way you want it. Once I get this going and stabilize it, because see it's going this here right now, I might want to stabilize it off to one side, then it'll just come like this in. It's just beginning stages of stabilizing this plant and getting it wrapped around. So I'm going to do four ties around the outside here first with you. And as we do this together... So it could take me up to two or three hours per plant to do this? Um, because these plants are so old, this is taking a long time. But normally we'll do this when the plants are not this old. So this is me um, playing, researching. Plant, how old is the plant? Uh, these plants are about six months old. And was this plant originally created from a clone? Yes. 100%. See, now, so, like I said, you don't want to go too far, too much stress. You want to make sure that that's just enough that all of these shoots are going to slowly, they're just going to pick up like this. See this? They're going to yeah. all do this. See how these all are going to just stand up beautifully? See what I'm talking about? Yeah. So now that I got that to that point, right about there, looks pretty good. Don't forget to do three times because that's the charm. Three times the charm? Okay, glasses. That's why I got three pair here. Okay. And there's one right there. <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure I was gonna, I'm gonna come in here and won't be able to find my glasses. I'm gonna be missing my bong rip. Like I had all of these paranoias. So you're liking that angle? I like that angle. And when the guy was doing it yesterday, he go, what's taking you so long? Why can't you just do it quickly? Ah, then I started seeing why. He would then spin it, and then he'd want to pull this one right down the middle. And this one's going to pull off to the side now. See, now I can pull this one off to this side here. I'm going to tie this one off to the side now. See how things are coming together now? See what I'm talking about? But, oh, I only did this once now, too, because we were too busy talking. Make sure you finish what you got going on. One, two, three. Now, I just kind of leave that tail there for now because it kind of kind of looks cool. That's it. So, this one here I can tie to if I really want. This is going to create a, a nice round part of this branch here. So, if I leave this here, it's going to go up like this and I'm going to go straight up the center. So, if I bring this out, see I'm trying to make a curve. So, as I do this on the side, this is going to slowly... And I, don't forget, these are going to curve up too, right? And I'm going to create a roundness from these bottoms now so it comes up like a ball. That's what we're doing right now. We're creating this round, awesome ball. Plant bending. Don't you like this? I'm super excited. If so you, you can... just tuned in, you're plant bending with John Burfello up in BC. He's joined us to help us with another chapter in our Home Growers series. We're just uh, bending, plant bending, ma making mothers. Well, this not you can not only just be a mother. This in specifically, I've already created two moms like this, and this one's going to wind up being a flowering plant with probably about twenty-five tops. So I mean, there's different ways, but I am definitely cutting clones from this, and I've already created two moms 
just like this. So just a little bend, see how, like I said, I'm trying to create this roundness to this plant? So everything can be bent, and that's why we have, once again, we have a hole about every inch. I saw Sorry. one, two, three holes in that one little area to go. Okay, I have a question. Yes. How long ago was that plant a seed? If it was made from a clone, 1985. So 1985, that seed popped. Yes. In Maple and Ridge. And every single clone has come they, off of this plant, that one seed. They're all the same age. Yep. They all have the same time in life. They've all had the same amount of time. Just like you that's, and me. We all get the same amount of time every day. That's kind of trippy when you think about it. Because you're replicating more and more plants, more and more opportunity for more vegetation, more flowers, simply by taking cuttings off of a mother that were that was a cutting off of a mother. How yes. many generations ago? How this many is going to be my. I was trying to count on that. We figure it was my sixth generation because my f initial first cut from 2006 went to almost 2011. Was it for his initial mom? Was five year mom? 2012, 2014, it died outside, but I had already taken clones from it because it was an outdoor strain at that point. And in 2014, it just mysteriously died. And so did my other friend's Medi Kush strain. So we were like, hmm, that's weird. See, I'm trying to manipulate where I want to tie this particular branch because I'm trying to find out the best way because it's pulling. So as that's pulling, I might want to stake that one too, right? So you'll see what I do here in a minute. I want to kind of get it to bolt there. There we go. And as you can see, I just keep the bowl on the ground. I wrap it around and then I judge it. So I was pre-cutting them, but then, like we said, we realized that pre-cutting wasn't really working. Ah, oh, that's why it goes that way. Look at that. It's got a full wrap there. See how I can just, like, twist that and bend that? So, once again, one, two, three. And when you get to where one, two, I get to a bigger branch on this side now. And because I broke that big branch, you can see this big hole here, right? So that's why I'm going to be tying all of these branches now down like this. So as I spin this plant, I find out exactly what the next one's going to tie. We're almost, we're almost to the other side now. What are you smoking on right now, Drew? Well, in Minnesota, we're, we're not allowed to enjoy the uh, the plant that you're enjoying out in Well, no, you're enjoying something there. I saw that. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying a Rocky Patel Vintage 2003 Cameroon Church. Oh, my God. See, see that's delicious. That's awesome because as you say that, I'm enjoying... Uh-oh. Can't find a letter. You just had it, John. So, I'm enjoying... Some MK Ultra grown in Whispering Falls in BC. Organic, with, with, with a nice cure, about a month cure. Uh, properly stored with a proper humidity pack for over six months to get that proper. F you know what I'm talking about now because when you're getting those cigars, they're properly cured. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh yeah, and that's how we should be describing cannabis. Not like I cured it in a week and hung it out and shipped it out the door. Do you think they do that with tobacco? I would say the tobacco that I'm smoking has probably been, it was probably harvested nine or ten years ago. There you go. And it's um, it's sat in, in rotational aging, natural aging systems in the field. You know, they put these giant leaves, the, the different classes of leaves, they put them over, hang them, rotate them so that they get a certain amount of air and a certain amount of, uh, of light and then they they put a bunch of them in the dark and eventually they get to this place where they have these wonderful flavors and, and just like uh, cannabis 
It's, it's surprisingly similar because the qualities in a cigar really have to do with the oils and the sugars. And the qualities in the, in the, in the uh, cannabis plant that we're talking about more today than we've ever talked about are terpenes. And, uh, you know, the conversation up until about a year, year and a half ago was all about access. Everybody finding a way to get access to cannabis. And now that conversation has shifted to quality. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a boatload of terpene. It's actually what you're talking about with that cigar and how you're describing it. And that's why I was just talking about it because the way you're describing that cigar and how those terpenes are cured and stuff like that, I mean, that's really what we're talking about here is saving those terpenes and getting those quality flavors that are helping us medicinally, medically, recreationally. Um, everything enhances, let's just say, dopamine, gives you that pleasure. Take a look at how cannabis affects you in so many different ways. It affects serotonin, so it actually uplifts you. It affects cortisol. It, it, it helps stress release. Let I me mean, think of all of these different hormones and different things. How cannabis helps you? Because that cigar helps you the same way, doesn't it, Drew? Isn't that why you have a nice I, cigar? I tell you, the reason I enjoy cigars is because there's. It's very difficult to be stressed out when you're enjoying a cigar. Thank you. Thank. That's what I'm talking about. It causes people to talk to each other. <laughs> It causes people to slow down. Yeah, producer Ramsey's also enjoying the stick today. You know what's really nice is, is they can sit there and you, and, and you do enjoy that, that flavor and that uniqueness. And the same thing with, that's why I love cannabis so much. See, see, see the similarities with cigar smokers or, or people who really like a fine cigar? They're connoisseurs. They're just not smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Ugh. You know what I mean? They're enjoying the flavor and, right. and, and the time and they know the year and how long it was stored for and, and where it came from and its genealogy and, and, and who packed it. And, like, that's amazing. Like, well, it, it has a story. Exactly. And so does every plant and every species and every flavor that you try. And pretty did much you anything us, that you... Did you tell us what species that plant was? What, what this, is, this, is, this is called, I called it Medical Kush, a.k.a. people are better known as Medical uh, Medi Kush. Everybody knows it as Medi Kush, but in the very beginning I called it my medicine. It was a Medical Kush. And it's on seedfinder.eu, so you can type it in. And it's, it's an F2. It's an old world packing uh, across with a blueberry, <clears throat> and that's what we've kind of put up with the genealogy behind it. And the terpenes behind it are quite amazing, and that's why I like it so much because it's uplifting, it's fruity, and it's, it's got a high valentine, uh, valency orange. That terpene is in Medi Kush, which is very similar to, say, Agent Orange, Ace and DC, and California Orange. There's only so many strains out there that have these similar terpenes, and that's some pretty cool knowledge to uh, understand, actually. So you're pretty smart about terpenes. That citrusy taste, that citrusy aroma flavor, that's, <coughs> is that lemonine? Is that, uh... Lemonine, limine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I do know about terpenes, but at the same time, um, I'm not an expert on it. So you have to definitely check out, like, Jeremy Fat and what they're doing with their research on terpenes and terpene profiling and taking a look at a terpene wheel and how to identify strains because we get identify strains by names and everybody wants wedding cake or Skittles or cookies or Medi or, or and we don't even know what half these strains are. But what we're really looking at is plant matching, cannabis matching, matching someone to an individual plant or species or terpene profile. I actually just wrote this down the other day, plant matching. Cool. Okay? I want to match plants to certain species, to certain people profiles to help them with their conditions. And we can match that plant by determining a wheel of color and size and flavor. You can now identify it by just quickly looking at a chart. This is just so cool. I can't think of the name of the research facility that's doing this, but it was on Clubhouse. It's Jeremy Fat. He's doing a whole chirping thing. Please check that out. It's very, very cool and interesting. And I think we should really start looking at that. It's going to be important to identify strains as we get with more legalization and federalization. All these names are confusing everybody. So, I mean, how do you know that Wedding Crasher or Wedding Cake or Skunk Funk or, or Div... Like, come up with a name. Smackledoos. Yeah, I got the Smackledoos strain. What is it? Hear what I'm yeah. saying? You don't know what it is or what it's doing for you, that medical person. So, I mean... It's just new ways to be able to identify and helping people in this industry. And at the same time, we're showing you how to bend your plant, right? 
Plant bending with John Burfella. See, I'm even having to move this hole right over to here. Look at that. See how I gotta pull this thing so far over to kind of manipulate how this is gonna go? Cause I don't I want it more over here, right? Look at that. How's that looking so far? Yeah, you're making progress. Oh yeah, no, I said it's gonna be some progress here going on. It's definitely in progress. But at the same time, we're actually identifying and learning more about the flavors that we're smoking, the plants that we're using. So this isn't just plant bending, this is plant education. This is cannabinoid education, terpene education. Because we're always about saving those terps. Why? Because they help us so much, right? Uh oh. Well, and what we've discovered lately is uh, there's a lot of uh, research coming out about just how quickly terpenes escape. Oh. And you've got, does it smell like terpenes in your, in your grow room there? Really? I mean, can you smell the plant? Yeah. And it's constantly giving off something, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to put look this to the side. Look, see how I'm look completely bent this off the side are. now? See how that is? Look at how happy you are. Well, I'm always happy. Come on. I keep light and destroying it out. But you're, you're generally, your happiness has come from your commitment to this plant, and this plant has basically saved your life. Oh, it has saved my life. It gave me a different quality of life. I've dedicated my life to cannabis. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I'm going to research it. I'm going to find out different ways of how it helps me. I'm going to find different strains for different conditions. We're going to talk about terpene profiling. Um, I, I've been breeding for a very long time, and a lot of people do know that about me. Is I've been playing with genetics and creating my own strains for years and years and years. We're talking about 15, 20 years I've done some projects. So it's taking a look at these different seeds and different projects, like those new seeds that I'm popping. I'm going to hit those with a Medi, uh, the Medi Lights mail and see what comes out of that cross. Because I know the Medi Kush is a great, great house strain. You take that Northern Light number five, which is a killer old school Afghan, like we're talking, and the Skunk Haze, which is just flavorful fruits. And we got that Valencia Orange with the Medi Kush back crossing into the Purple Punch and GMO Runs Cross Cookies and Cream, which is Girl Scout. Ah! We'll talk about that in about two years, okay? That's reality, in a couple of years. So, when you're doing all this work and you're and you're angling towards this cloning process, this isn't the process of crossing. That's a whole different exercise, right? When you're crossing one with the other. See how I am in my book? I love you right now, cause yeah, marijuana body. Here's a really good book by Robert County Clark. Definitely, oh, I mean, just like breeding cannabis. Um, you mentioned it. Yeah, I'm, I'm... But cloning is replicating. Cloning is yes. getting, multiplying your plants. 100%. You're getting the exact same genetic, exact same profile or cannabinoid profile from that plant, depending on how it's grown um, and different quality, different heat stress. We're going to see, but mostly it's going to have the same, um, let's say, uh, I can't say the word right now. I know what I'm going to say, but I forgot it because this branch got a little changed on me. It's going to have the same terpenes in a sense the same flavor noise the same it's gonna have that same kind of like aromatherapy type effect even though it might be growing differently and stuff like that but it really comes down if it's not cured properly then we get those different flavors again right so th this is a way for you to get consistently grow cycle after grow cycle the same quality of a plant the same characteristics of a plant that you're interested in that's correct. Oh, oh, see, I just broke that one. I pulled that one over and I felt it snap, right? I was like, whoa, it just started to peel. Because it's old, so that's why we have to put those extra tomato clips. I just did it. I was like, oh, I'm breaking it. But that's okay. We're going to fix that right away. But then you can't fix it once you break it. Well, no, you can because you can, the plant normally, so this is how we fix one when we break it. Check it out. So I just kind of snapped this right. I can feel it's coming off right there. I broke it right at this node on the inside of the plant right up in there. And you can see it's just starting to kind of split. So right away, we do, yeah, you guessed it. Put a tomato clip right about here between two nodes. So this way the tomato clip doesn't slip down. So we got it between two clones, one here and one here. As you can see, two and two right there. Doing the same tomato clip idea here. Like I said, something we just learned yesterday was so cool. Because now I can actually, I got another tomato clip right there already, which is nice. So. 
Okay, now so what I do, I got, do it this I got, way. I got, I got another question. Please. So how long, from the time those seeds pop, how long do you have to wait? How many weeks or months will there between the time that that seed pops and the time that you could actually start taking clones off it? Uh, probably about six weeks, I'm going to say. Four, uh, five, six weeks. You're going to want to see, like I always say six weeks to see if you want to see if it's going to be sexing. Um, if you want to take a look at this genetic profile, I mean not sexing, but you want to see if it's a male or female, and that's what we're going to be doing next with those seeds is determining what they are. Like see this clone in the middle here? It's just creating a little bit of a problem for me. So I'm actually going to peel this right off the stalk right here because the way that branch broke. So I'm going to take this one off here. I'm going to peel this off. Let me see what I'm talking about here, guys. See how this, like, another pair of scissors? I have certain scissors for everything here. Okay. I didn't go anywhere, but the scissors are gone. So we got that little thing on the bottom there. You can see that's, like, peeling it off. See that? See what I'm talking about? Yep, you're going to get that right in the water. So now I'm just going to cut this off here, showing my other camera. Now I'm just going to cut this off. See right there? Yep. See, that's like a tap root. Boom, right into the water. That's a great clone. And mind you, it's halfway up the string here too. So I did that so I can properly now fasten this branch that got broken here. So now I'm coming up in here. I'm tying this branch off so... It doesn't break any farther. Now you can see it's kind of see I'm getting it there now. See now I can bend it again. See that? See what I'm talking about? So let me ask you this: uh, we're, we're going to shift uh, in the next few minutes from the bending exercise to the more to the cloning and the how to carry through with the cloning process. But John. It, does it matter whether a cutting comes off the lower part of the plant or the higher part of the plant? Well, here's the whole thing. Now, we've talked about this, and, and there's things that we talked about over the years and stuff. Now, we used to always think that the bottoms would root quicker. Hey, the bottoms, you cut the clones from the bottom, they root quicker. I and mean, they were the worst looking. And I started cutting the tops off and cutting clones off of the plant. I'm going to take a look at where the clones were cut from, which ones were more healthier, which ones were more vigor. Um, trying to save plants, I take the bottoms off because we were going into flower, so we clean up the bottoms and then the flowering top. So that's why I always cut clones from the bottom. I would say the most of the best clones are near the top, in my opinion, um, and that's where we cut clones. That's why I'm creating all of these different stoats here because these bottom ones, when these all come straight up, they're all like tops now, right? And then I'm taking those all off as clones. So I'm creating all tops. Why? For better roots. And when I peel. I just did this test last week, and I did that. You can both of like that. I was doing a root testing with PPFD and light testing and stuff like that. And one thing we realized is um, you lose track of what you're talking about. Get me back on track. Yeah, that's. I'm just wondering if is it because there's a difference in chemicals in the plant at the lower level than at the top? Whoa! See how I broke that plant there, and I just saved that. Yeah. This is fun. You are having fun. Oh, I'm going to do a double cross here. See how now I've got one cross on the other side? Yeah, because I'm trying to really fill in this hole because I broke that whole branch off. So I'm going to try and pull this over here to fill in that hole now that I broke that branch. I'm going to kind of really manipulate this branch. There we go. So as you can see, as I roll, as I spun this around, I was able to find a different place to pull it. So you're going to find that sweet spot as you're watching your plant and where things are going to go and how they're best going to be able to place. And what I'm doing is I'm using this branch here to pull that over that way. So is it true that the only reason you're doing this is to create clones? You, you don't do this bending business with your 
your whole collection of plants do not me but i know people who have only they, they have four plants they do with all four plants and get massive plants i can't see that's why i have four pairs of glasses there we go that was better so if you could do this bending routine you would do this bending routine to maximize the the density of your plant it's a lot of work to do this as you can see and at the same time when you go to trim this, it's a big pain in the ass too. Because you got all of these different sites. So for me, if I had four plants, this is how I would do it. Because I get my maximum yield at that point. And why is it a pain to trim? Because of all the strings in the way? Yeah. That's why I hate using tomato cages, because when it comes down to the end to cut the plants out, I like to just cut my plant and hang it. This will be a hard plant to cut and hang. You'd have to cut it individual and, 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 and dry it differently. So that's why I'm creating a mother plant. And as you can see, as I slowly pull all these around and start creating this, you'll see over the next couple of weeks where you'll see different parts of this. This will create a nice ball. Okay, when you get done with that one, let's shift into the other section of the... Uh, I have to do the top here first, but I just can't... This is like one of these things where... Well, and you're, I can tell you're having a good time. I'm having a great time. I need to do bond rip though. I'm definitely going to have to... Oh, 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 oh. See that? Mm -hmm. ah. And now it's broken right there. That's broken there. I would never do that. But now that it's safe there, I love how we came up with that yesterday. It's just awesome. And you guys are getting it live. So just enough that is going to... This is exciting. I, I This is so exciting to show you the plant bending and just understanding this and learning it firsthand. Like, we've done... I did stress testing and I, I did super cropping. I've shown this in all my videos over the years. Like you take a stem and you, and you get it nice and soft and you slowly bend it over. You crack the center of your plants and you bend the whole plant. There's all these methods you can do with plants, right? But this one in particular, guys. Now, I'm going to check the center of that and see how it's just like it's kind of wobbly now. Now I'm going to now I'm going to have that so that's like centered. Just like that. So now what I want to do is, now that I've gone all the way around, and you see now I've got ties all the way around this plant, I'm going to get ready to bend this top. And when I bend this top, I want to know which way. This is all pulling on the wrong way, so I'm going to want to stabilize this plant this way so I can bend this top and have it straight. See what I'm doing here? Yeah. Now I want to make sure I don't snap this, because the last one I did here, I snapped it. You can see it's almost so hard here, it can't bend here anymore. So you have to bend it from here and slowly pull it over to there. And I'm going to pull it probably to that center right down this middle and move that over. Can you see what's going on here? Here, let me move this up. Well, I'm just wondering, do you have to put another stake in? These are going to slowly bend. Is that one stake going to be enough? I'm being so careful. <laughs> This is, this is where you, you wind up breaking your plant in half, okay? So this is what you do not want to do, but I'm going to do this quickly with you guys. You're going to put another tomato clip in the top up here. So we got our tomato so clip. So the tomato clip is between the main stalk of the plant and the stake. Yes. We got a tomato clip right up here in the middle here. You can see this like right up there, right? And what I'm doing is now I'm bending this whole plant, but I don't want it to break here. It's, it's, it's really being forceful. So might have to kind of take this tomato clip off and go up one more note. See how finicky this can be? And you really don't want to push it too. Now, I already know, because I've already did it, that if you get to a certain point, you're going to snap this plant. These are all going to turn up. Now, I'm going to wind up cutting this top off in about two weeks and taking all of these clones and creating massive clones and then completely cutting this top off. So that's where I am right now. How far is that plant from the flowering stage? Well, I can put it in the flower tomorrow, but right now um, I'm going to take a dunce of clones off of this, and this probably won't go into flower uh, for a couple years. Because then, when three years after it's been for three years, 
I'll leave it outside for the summer and they'll go into flower probably in 2024. Bend in. Ah, I feel like it's gonna snap. We gotta be so careful. Ooh, getting a little nervous here. Ah. So when you come to plant whisper. Oh, that's a little pressure. Okay, right there. It's a little stressful. Are you stressed out with me? Because I'm pretty stressed out right now. I'm sure I'm not feeling the same level of stress that you are, but I can tell that your uh, anxiety level has risen a little bit. You might, you might need to uh, have a moment to gather yourself and medicate a little bit so you can alleviate some of that stress. Well, the whole thing is, is, is you get to a point, see, I've let, I've let the stress off of that plan, but this is how you... It's so easy to break your plants when you're doing this kind of stress because that extra little millimeter is going to, like I did it yesterday, and that's how we broke the one plant, it's just that extra little bit, and you can feel the tension, and all of a sudden it just snaps. You know when you're trying to do something, all of a sudden it's like, snap? Don't break. How's that look? It's spread out nicely. Is it on that perfect angle that we're looking at? I'm actually looking at the yeah. camera so I can yeah. see it because I can't. See, that's that angle that this one can only go a tiny bit more, but you want that angle. You want that angle yeah. so this thing will turn up. And around. Now, this is going to stand straight up, and that will wind up turning into the top roundness of this plant when I cut this whole top off here at one point. But that will probably be in about couple weeks yeah oh 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 it's just that close I almost felt like it went crack this is the exciting part why did it hold it's the hold okay so as you can see plant bending can be stressful and it's so rewarding because you're going to see the rewards of how this plant's going to bend and look so nicely. And one thing I, oh, I remember I said I had to stabilize it, and I didn't. I had to stabilize that plant so it was centered. And I pulled it over before I did that, and that's why I got that feel. So I need to pull this back into this corner here now. Is that more straighter up? So these are all these little things that you got to pay attention to, and that's why we're going. This, I said it's going to be a little long video today just so we get the exact kind of knowledge of what you're looking for. And because I'm only going to do this once, I don't think I'll ever do another video like this again. No, it's just, it's so time intensive. I mean, the technique of, you know, understanding that you're trying to find a way to bring those arms to an angle where you're going to create the best opportunity for all those nodes to turn up. So now I'm That's, straightening. Is that plant straight now? See, mommy said I want to straighten it. Yep. I have one plant in there I've tied 19 times. On one plant? On one plant, 19 ties. How long did that take, a couple hours? Yep. Is that straight now? See how I've straightened that by stabilizing the sides so now it's not gonna move? And that's what we're looking at, one that nice and solid. So now I've tied back to that tomato clip that's wrapped around the plant and the steel stake and I've pulled it, now that i pulled that top down, now you can see what I mean. Now this plant becomes extremely fragile. If you just top that, now you wind up breaking branches. This is how you break branches because now everything is stressed right out. It's so tight that if you move this thing one angle to the left or to the right, the whole branch breaks. So remember. I mean, moving this plant is going to be challenging too now that I've tied it up inside of this room. Because look how I got to get it out. Look at this thing. Look at how wide it just got. And I'm still tying. I'm still going to bring this branch over to here now. And it's going to be on that side of that rope. So in reality, can I get it underneath of there? I can't. See, that's the mistake I made. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a stake and I'm going to move this over to this side. 
But you can see the flat bending. What's going on with flat bending? Because I got to do all of these centers now. I'm going to pull this down. So all of this is going to get pulled down to kind of manipulate this plant. And I'll pull this center over to this side. And this is going to stand up now. All of these tops are going to go like straight up, right? And you mentioned that it's really fragile right now. So will the t it will it will it adjust and be less fragile over the course of the next few weeks? Well, what's going to happen is all these branches I've tied down now. All these shoots are going to get as big as that branch itself. So of course it's going to get a lot stronger now that those are becoming the the branch. The the I guess the I'm going to say these little clones coming off are going to turn into the branch instead of the branch being the branch. That makes sense? It does. Oh, those little scissors I was just looking for? Right there. Yeah, so when you get done with that one, let's shift into the... Uh, the cloning. The cloning. We're just cloning around cloning. with John Burfello. So we already started the cloning process because we got those peats ready by boiling. See how this is all nicely humidity up here right now, but I've actually changed the camera around, so we'll get back to that in a second, guys. One, two, three times the charm. I always got to do three. And I learned that because I used to hang off the side of a building on a swing stage because I was a glazer by trade. And um, three is going to save your life. So for people that don't know what a glazer does, I install glass in high rises. And was that what you were doing when you had your fall? That's what I was doing when I um, made a wrong mistake and fell 20 feet onto concrete in 2005. And that's when I started realizing how much cannabis was so medicinal and was my medicine and how much I needed it for my pain control. Um, it was really an eye-opener of using cannabis recreationally as a young uh, lad, but probably used it more or less for, uh, I'd say, mild... Uh, Everybody else was on Ritalin, I always said, and I was smoking weed. So, and you know the best part about that is? This is pretty cool. Uh, I am 50 years old this year. And in 1979 is probably when I smoked my first joint. We stuffed some leaf, wasn't butter or anything, that we dried out under, under the, the, um, the, the chicken lamps because we had red heat lamps for the chickens. We dried it out and we stuffed it in some bamboo that was hollowed out and lit up with wooden matches so today this year not today this is my 42 years of smoking weed well and it's arguable that your cannabis uh medication your consumption has allowed you to live through some pretty painful times well it's, it's helped me tremendously 100 percent sure um and see this i've cut this one wrong and this is my problem this is why you learn about this so i got this one here is actually posing that I can't bend this branch over to here, so I'm gonna have to cut this, rebend that, and pull that back over again. See how that leaned right over again? So I'm gonna add a different tomato clip in the middle here, and then we're gonna get into da -da -da, cotton clones. Okay, where's that? Glasses. So, have you ever done any plant bending before? I've never done, you know, I grew a lot of tomatoes with my dad as a kid. And yeah. we used to pull a lot of suckers out and, and do a lot of uh, pruning uh, in order to support the fruit that, you know, the flowers that we wanted to see really develop into, into fruit. But, um, no, it wasn't about... Uh, we weren't cloning tomatoes. We weren't cloning. We were doing, you know, we'd go to the nursery and buy the plants in the spring, or we'd we tried running them from seeds a few times, and it was always easier to get established plants. So that's the same as clones.